Hi, I'm Dr. Claire Gordy and I'm a yeast geneticist. I work on cell stress, um, so of course everyone knows what stress is. You think about when you're stressed out because you have a test, um, but in cells we think of stress that occurs um, because of some sort of physiological condition in your body. So um, the cell might not have enough nutrients, it might not have enough oxygen, it might have damage to its DNA. And so what I'm interested in is understanding how the cell um, sees that stress and decides what to do to try to survive. So I'm specifically interested in a cellular process called autophagy, and that literally means self-eating. So whether you know it or not, um, you have cells in your body that are eating themselves right at this moment. And cells do that um, not to try to hurt themselves, but to try to survive in really desperate situations. So how does a cell know, oh, I have enough food, I'm okay, versus I don't have enough food, I better start eating myself. And I'm also interested in understanding when a cell might use this autophagy or self-eating process other than in a situation where it's starving. Yeast actually mate, and most people don't, don't realize this. We're talking about the same kind of yeast that we use to make bread or, or beer. So you might have these in your house. Um, so we would start out with a diploid yeast cell. That means it has two copies of each chromosome. And then the cell can undergo meiosis to form haploid cells. These would be equivalent to eggs and sperm in humans. So after we undergo meiosis, we have haploid cells that each have one copy of each chromosome, something like this. And then, over time, these cells can mate. So we can have two haploid cells that can combine, so they're going to fuse together, sort of like an egg and a sperm would, to again make a diploid cell with two copies of each chromosome. All right, so when the cells mate, they actually perform a small amount of the self-eating process. Not nearly as much as what we see if a cell is starving, which makes sense because they've got food, but they, they start to digest themselves just a little bit. And we still don't know exactly why this happens, um, but what it looks like so far is that the cells use this self-eating when they mate to try to get rid of extra organelles. So what you might imagine is maybe, say, each of these cells has three mitochondria. So then if they mated and they fused to form one new diploid cell, that cell would end up with six mitochondria. Maybe it only needs, say, four. So we've got some extras that we need to get rid of before they mate. And we think that that is why these cells are performing autophagy when they're mating. And um, you can think of it like when you move in with your new roommate when you're going off to college. Maybe you each have one microwave, but your dorm room doesn't need two microwaves, so you've got to get rid of something extra before you combine all your stuff. We think that's what's going on here. As we're sort of wrapping up our studies about how yeast uses this self-eating process um, while it's mating, what I'm interested in starting to look at going forward is how other types of yeast so not your baker's yeast that you have at home to cook with, but yeast that can infect humans. How those yeasts also use cellular self-eating to survive while they're infecting you. So whether this process helps to make the yeast more pathogenic.